It's time for your SportsEdge.com sideline report with Todd Griffin. Talking sports and more here on 1580, 103.3 WPKY and worldwide at WPKYonline.com. Here's your host, Todd Griffin. And good morning, everyone. The sideline report is on the air from 1035 West Main Street in Princeton, the WPKY studios. A live show today for Turkey Day. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And a big surprise on the show this morning. We got former co host Ty Engelbright back in the studio with us. And Ty, Glad you could come in today and be on the show with us. Good morning, Todd. Happy Thanksgiving to you and all. And uh, boy, it's great. This uh, Thanksgiving is about tradition, right? Yeah. Guess what? This is a tradition. Oh yeah, coming well, in four, on Thanksgiving Day, doing a live show. Four years now. Is that right for yes. us or five? Well, we started the show in September Se- sep- of 2017. Se- 17. Okay, so so this is our fourth, fourth Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yep. So uh, yeah, that all works out. And uh, glad you could come in and. Uh, be on the show Thanks and for having uh, me. you know we've brought back our top five list not just once we twice twice we've yes. got two of those things coming up today so you know I, I just heard Princeton give up a loud cheer you know oh, I did too and I, and I actually preempted some of the uh, I've I made a few calls and a few texts saying hey we've got some top fives today so oh, wow. we've got so, maybe a few more listeners today wow well, the the audience is growing today I'm our a usuals are now. there though but and uh, also today we're going to talk to Fonzo White on the telephone. He's the boys' basketball coach at Bishop Lures in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, they're getting ready for their basketball season and uh, lots of things going on with him. So we'll get to talk to him on this Thanksgiving Day as well. And uh, a lot coming up on the show. We need to get to a break first, though, but we'll be back and tell you about our top five list for today right after this here on 1580-103.3-WPKY. Need cash fast? ABC Finance is open with social distancing implementations in place. They believe it's more important now than ever to get a handle on your finances. Hi, this is Jody Lamb at the Princeton ABC Finance location. And this is Todd Morris at the Hoppinsville location. At ABC Finance, we don't just provide loans, but we also provide value advice to help you get your credit in better standing. Our friendly team of professionals has your best interest in mind. We celebrate with you when your finances improve. We encourage you to like our Facebook page, ABC Finance Company. Many of those useful tips are posted daily on our page, including tons of community info and motivation for the day. If you social distancing guidelines and safety measures, like and follow ABC Finance Company on Facebook. ABC Finance is located off Fort Campbell Boulevard in Hopkinsville next to O'Charlie's. Then Princeton and the Princeton Plaza. Apply for loans online or simply give them a call. They'll take your application over the phone. ABC Finance, all loans subject to normal credit approval. Hi, this is Kelly Martin of Penny Royal Hospice, and we are proud to be a part of the greatest comeback of all time. Test your knowledge on everything from turkeys and jingles to Christmas movies and sugar plums. What are those anyway? It's time to play our holiday quizzes brought to you by Safe Construction in Hopkinsville. Why do it, you ask? Because it's plain old good fun. And don't we all need a little of that after a year like this? Play holiday quizzes at WPKYonline.com and click on contests. A new quiz is loaded every few days. Willow Pond of Eddyville and Paducah is open, serving delicious food for curbside and delivery. Open seven days a week with a full menu and grill items, burgers, and desserts. Open Friday and Saturday for lunch from 11 to 7. Open Monday through Thursday and Saturday from 4 to 7. Each location will have two phone lines to accommodate call-in orders. Call in your orders for curbside pickup today at Willow Pond of Eddyville at 270-388-4354 or Paducah 270-443-5222 and follow them on Facebook. Deer season's right around the corner. So if you happen to bag that big buck with your vehicle, let Trice Hughes' Collision Center go to work for you. Call or stop by for a free estimate. Great people make up our home team at Trice Hughes. Trice Hughes is here for you. And any questions you may have about your vehicle, buy your next vehicle from the home team. Find them on Highway 91 North, Princeton, or at TriceHughes.com. This is the Sideline Report on 1580-103.3 WPKY. Again, thanks for joining us on this Thanksgiving Day here at WPKY. Ty Engelbright with us. Fonzo White will be joining us just a little bit later on during this show. Again, thanks for tuning in this morning to the Sideline Report. And, uh, Ty, we were just talking uh, when we started the show, I believe, September of 2017. Uh, that first show we did, I don't even think we 
said how long it was going to be because we didn't really know how long we were going to go. No, <laughs> and the thing was, I, th- I think we have more commercials now <laughs> during the show than we did back then, so we, we had to just kind of fill with a bunch of talk, and I think that was sort of spawned this idea of our of our top five list because we could talk a little bit of sports, and then we could kind of go off and do kind of some other interesting things for these top fives. It wasn't always about sports. A lot of times it, it was about sports, but... Uh, so it's kind of fun that we're going to do a couple today, too. Yeah, and uh, one of those is sports yep. and one's not. So That's right. Uh, our first one's going to be uh, top five sports records that will never be broken. So that will be interesting. And uh, you want to start this one? You want me to start yeah, at number five? I, I, no, I'll start. Okay. Um, I was going to silence my phone here since I hope nobody <laughs> blows it up. But but uh, And, and I, this one kind of hurts me. It's bittersweet to give this one because growing up in Florida, uh, before, I moved here in 1980. I was 12 years old, but I was a Miami Dolphins fan in the early 70s, you know. Well, the Bucks were coming. We had bumper stickers on cars, kept saying the Bucks were coming. This was 1976. Well, this streak probably won't ever be broken, but the Bucks, when they their inaugural season till their last two games, 1977, lost 26 games in a row. Oh, that's (laughs) tough. So I think that's probably one sports record. That have probably never been broken. A couple teams have come close to that. I think they had 17 and 18 losses. I think the Detroit Lions had a streak that was like 17 or 19 games, something like that. But that that one probably will never be broken. Yeah, typically a professional team is going to pick up a win somewhere in there. You would think. Yeah. Okay, my number five is going to be Cal Ripken's consecutive games played streak, 2,632. You know, guys don't even play an entire season anymore. How's anybody ever going to touch that? Yeah, that's incredible. You know, the Iron Man before Cal was Lou Gehrig, and and we we looked at these records. It probably won't be broken again. And I think that one at one time was thought uh, that that it probably wouldn't be broken, Lou Gehrig's. But I really think Cal's probably will yeah. will, will stand the test of time. Uh, poor Wally Pip, though. You know, I mean, <laughs> one, one day they're like, you know, hey, take a break. We're going to put this kid Lou Gehrig in, and, and, and that was it. Never, never the played again. Back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a good one. I, I almost, I, I you know, th- th- there were some typical ones that you could put on there. I tried to go a little bit different. I needed some help because I, I had to do a little research on this one. But that's good. Oh yeah. Because uh, it's it's fun to do that. My number four, and I love this one. You you know being. F- Kentucky, you know, we got horse racing, we got bourbon. Well, I threw horse racing in here. It doesn't have to do with the Kentucky Derby, but Secretariat's 31 link win in 1973 uh, at, I think it was the Preakness. Uh, 31 links. I mean, just blew away the field. Sham was supposed to give uh, Secretariat a run. Didn't at all. That was one and a half mile race. Also a record time, two minutes and 24 seconds. Wow. Probably... Probably will not will not see a thirty one link win again. Now, I've I've actually seen Secretariat on some of the lists for all time greatest athletes ever because yeah. Secretariat ran as fast as Secretariat wanted to. That, that, that's exactly right. <laughs> I love it. All right, my number four uh, going to the NHL for this one, so mm-hmm. everybody will love that. Uh, Wayne Gretzky with two thousand eight hundred fifty seven career points. That's a good one. That's almost one thousand more points than anybody else in NHL history. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think he scored 900 and something goals, and you could take those out and just use his assists, and he would still be the all-time leading scorer in the NHL. Yeah, amazing career, and of course, you you, you talk about and, and and around here, you go up a little bit further north, and you kind of get those hockey. You, you, but with the with the uh, Predators in Nashville yeah. now, we get more hockey fans down south. But you hear names like Gordy Howe. Uh, and then Gretzky, and the great one is is just that. Yeah, I always say Gretzky was a better hockey player than Michael Jordan was a basketball player, and I still think Jordan is the greatest of all time. I, I would I would tend to agree with you that way, and there's no doubt. And I've got someone on my list for my next one that is called the King. Okay, and I'm talking about number 43 in NASCAR, Richard Petty, 200 NASCAR wins. Uh, there's no, nobody that can probably ever eclipse that at all. Uh, and, of course, you had kind of the, the pre-modern era of NASCAR. He kind of came along when, when NASCAR was just really becoming big and how it kind of formed in the modern era. But nobody's ever going to touch number 43. He is the king for, for that reason. My number three is kind of along those same lines. It's Byron Nelson's 11 straight PGA Tour victories in 1945. He won 18 of the 35 tournaments that year dominated you know 
that's not going to happen again. No, that's not going to happen again. I actually have uh, – it's not really a – it's not really coming up. I, I've got a golf one on there, and it's not really an honorable mention. It's more of kind of a tie at my number one. Okay. I, I do want to mention my number two. We're going to the NBA, and I'm talking about Wilt the Stilt. Well, his 100 point game, 19, I think it was 1962, Philadelphia Warriors versus the New York Knicks, 169 to 147. 100 point game by Wilt Chamberlain, and he averaged, I think, like 50.4 points a yeah, game that, that year. season. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that so I mean, incredible. I think Kobe came close, he had 81 yeah. in a game, but I don't think anybody, especially with the modern era, with the talented guys around the way the game is played, you're not going to see that. But he's totally uh, was dominant. If, in I'm, NBA. if I'm not mistaken, there's no video of that. Because the there was no video of the game, nobody filmed the game, nobody showed that game. That shows you how long ago that was. Exactly. You know, if somebody did that now, there'd, oh, there'd be, be a everywhere. thousand. Yeah, yeah, there'd be a thousand different copies of that video, but no video of Wilt's one hundred point game. And and the the score one sixty nine to one forty seven. Yeah. And he had a hundred. Yeah. Uh, that one sixty nine. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, so my number two, we're gonna go to baseball. Cy Young, 749 complete games, never happening again. No. 511 wins, never happening again. Uh, You look at that and you think, you know, 20 wins is a great season for a pitcher. It'll make you rich. If you did 20 wins for 25 straight years, that's 500 wins. You still need 12 more wins to pass Cy Young. That's never happening. Yeah, and back in the day, though, I think he started – you know, forty three games one season. Oh yeah, they, they probably yeah. had probably had like a three man rotation. And he came up every third day. <laughs> exactly. I'll just bring Cy yeah. in. <laughs> but yeah, that's an awesome record. Never, never, never will be eclipsed. Okay, I think I'm up to my number one. Yeah, we're up to number one. Okay, so I'm going to back to baseball, and then I've got a golf one thrown in there too. But the five thousand seven hundred fourteen strikeouts by Nolan Ryan. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, probably not going to happen again. I think Randy Johnson was the next closest. I don't know the exact number. Of course, he's retired now. Well, nobody can pitch long enough to get to those numbers. Exactly. And uh, I love, I still, from time to time when I'm cruising through YouTube, will still watch the Don't, West the, don't Mess with the Old Man yeah. clip when, when he threw at Robin Ventura and Robin decided to storm the mound. Yeah, bad, and it was bad not decision. Good. Bad decision. I love that one. And then I've got to throw in okay. my kind of joint number one, and that is Jack Nicholas's 18 majors. That's a good one, too. Because I don't think we thought – By age 30, Tiger Woods had 14, and we thought, boy, it's just going to be blown away, but it just didn't happen, and I don't think it's going to happen. Well, that shows you just how difficult that was to begin with, that that Tiger couldn't get there, and I think at one point Tiger was the best player in the history of the game. There's no doubt. Okay, we're up to number one. Here's my number one. It's a little different. Uh, Sports records that will never be broken. This will never, ever happen again Uh, in 1899. Oh, wow. The Sewanee Tigers won five football games in six days, you know, taking a train around the South. Oh, wow. uh, uh, that team finished the year 12 and 0, gave up 10 points all season, uh, shut out all five opponents in six days, uh, outscored the opponents in that little trip 91 to nothing. That was a road trip to previously undefeated Texas, Texas A&M, Tulane. LSU and Ole Miss, and and one other wow. little note from wow. from eighteen ninety nine touchdowns at the time were worth five points. Oh, really? So so if they were worth six points, you know, a lot more points. A lot on more that. points on the, on that. Yeah, but the Swanee Tigers. Yeah, out of Swanee, where? Uh, it's now the University of the South, I believe. Okay, it is. In, okay, in so it is Swanee. Okay, yeah. so right down the road here off I twenty four. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know. Uh, Actually, I think Trip Branch had an offer from Swanee. Have you ever looked at Swanee, uh, gone online and looked at any of their – I have. I have. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's, it's an awesome yeah. school. University of the South, awesome. Yeah. We, have an, we have an alum here in Princeton. Really? George Eldred. Wow. And maybe even a few more, but I know George Eldred went there. I just like looking at the pictures, man. It's a beautiful campus, and uh, like I said, uh, you go back to 1899, Swanee with a big road trip. and That's uh, awesome. A few people may not remember, but Swanee was an original member of the Southeastern Conference. I'll be darned. Did not know that either. So that, now, that, that now, now it's an NCAA Division three school, but, right. but you know, nobody's ever going to play five games in six days and get on a train and you know, Unbelievable. You know, play this day. And I think they had 13 players on the team. You know, everybody went both talk, ways. Talk about Ironmen. Yeah, everybody went both <laughs> ways. Uh, 12-0 and 0 that season, so that's 
Unbelievable. That's my number one. So that's a good one, man. Good list. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good list. But I mean, you, you pulling Swanee out there at the end, awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. Need to get to a break here on the show. Uh, Fonzo White is going to join us on the phone when we come back. So stay with us here on the Sideline Report on 1580-103.3-WPKY. Your WPKY Weather Edge Weather Center forecast is brought to you by Community Medical. Your WPKY Weather Edge Weather Center forecast. Partly sunny skies expected through the day today. Going to be a great Thanksgiving day, a high of 58 degrees. Tonight, partly cloudy skies and overnight low down to 38. Partly sunny skies through the day tomorrow, reaching a high of 61 and sunny 54 for Saturday. Again today for Thanksgiving Day, partly sunny skies, a high of 58. Winter's creeping our way. It's time to button up your car, truck, and SUV with a pre-winter inspection from Trice Hughes' service department. They'll do a multi-point inspection of your vehicle, including checking your antifreeze, wiper blades, battery and more. Time to get ready for Old Man Winter with Trice Hughes. Trice Hughes is here for you. And any questions you may have about your vehicle, buy your next vehicle from the home team. Find them on Highway 91 North, Princeton, or at TriceHughes.com. Out of an abundance of caution and in your best interest, public access to the Princeton Electric Plant Board office is restricted. Normal business operations will continue utilizing the drive through window. Bill payments using online methods, bank drafts, and credit cards are encouraged. But checks and cash will continue to be accepted methods of payment. Utilizing the free online payment system from the comfort of your own home is both safer and more efficient for you. You will only need your account number, which is located on your bill, and a credit card or debit card to use this convenient feature. In an effort to help our community and assist our neighbors, during this time of uncertainty, Princeton Electric Plant Board invites customers to call the office if they need additional time to pay their electric bill due to the loss of work. We appreciate our customers and look forward to working through this together. This is the Sideline Report on 1580-103.3 WPKY. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Ty Engelbright in the studio with us this morning and now joining us on the phone from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Fonzo White, coach of Bishop Lures High School there. And Fonzo, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, Todd. And Todd, thank you guys for having me on the show today. Absolutely. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, and uh, what's kind of the plans for you guys uh, as far as getting basketball season going up that way? Well, right now, we, we've been going for about two weeks with practices and everything, and just this week, the basketball game started up for some schools. Uh, at least for me, I got at least another week before we actually start playing games because our football team is playing the state finals of two-way tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. at Lucas Oil Stadium. And so I got eight guys that play football right now so that doesn't allow me to do too much through the course of practice so I can get my younger kids ready, freshman and JV guys ready for the season. But, again, we pushed our games back. We were supposed to start up December 1st, uh, but we pushed that game back and the Mishawaka Marion game back for that Saturday. So we won't start up until December 8th for our first game, so that allow our football guys some time to get in and get their legs under them. Yeah, that was kind of a problem teams were facing here, but then uh, basketball season got pushed back. Right now we're kind of on hold in the state of Kentucky. Uh, practice can start again December 14th, and games can start again January 4th, but uh, because of the coronavirus, we're kind of waiting right now. So so you guys say that you're good to go with your season, uh, especially once you get your foot, football guys back. Yes, uh, like I said, some of the games started last night, and then there's some games tomorrow also. But, again, like we're, it's going to be like putting a puzzle together throughout the whole year because, like, our girls' team, basketball team, they had started the season with their games about two weeks ago, and it was almost like they played three games and then they were quarantined for 10 days because one of the, the contract tracing thing that they – contact tracing that they do with the teams now, and, you know, everybody has to fill out paperwork. Everybody has to keep track and make sure everybody is healthy and – just go through a different routine than we did last year and it kind of makes things difficult because you could be on a nice run in your season and then you have to put your whole season on hold for 10 to 14 days just based upon the contact tracing yeah how has practice been different for you guys a lot of temperature checks and those kind of things yes like as soon as they come through the door uh, i do a temperature check with the athletic trainer and then like i said we fill out an individual sheet for each kid that comes through the door 
and you know by checking all the symptoms and making sure they check off and then if there's ever any questions of course you got to keep attendance and just it's a lot more paperwork that you have to keep track of for that and you know again it's just it's different than it was last year and we can only hope that it can get better for us so that's less work we got to do on the other end and we can focus on coaching basketball which a lot of the schools in the fort wayne area and the indianapolis area have went to virtual learning models right now and until after january 19th but they still allow us to play the basketball season you know give or take depending on if a team has the contact tracing or someone tests positive for covid is this a year three now for you there at bishop lures Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Year three for me. And we're looking, we're expected to do some great things among ourselves. The expectation's high for us. But, you know, in the area, we're kind of getting a little bit more looks at what people expect of us. And, you know, just the success that we had last year, uh, we go from being the hunters to being the hunted for the most part. And guys have got to do a different way of preparing for us because we play a different style, especially in the SAC conference that we play in. And, there's just a lot of great teams in there. We're right now we're in the middle of the pack, pick fourth to finish fourth in the conference. Uh, Homestead, which is always tough, is picked to finish first. Second is Carroll, who's always tough, and then Southside High School is uh, picked to finish third, and then we're picked to finish fourth. So you know we hope to surprise them again this year, but I don't think it'll come to come as a surprise if we do win again. Hey, Fonzo, Ty Engelbright here, and uh, let's 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 go back a little bit and talk about the effect of the virus, the coronavirus, on the morale of your kids, and how this year compared to last year, maybe as we started, you know, had to kind of start all this. Uh, how do you keep your kids motivated and excited about playing when they had the frustration of, of of you know temperature checks and masks? Do you see a difference? Do you have to do something a little extra to keep your guys? Uh, motivated and excited about the season? Well, one of the biggest things that we've done is that the school, Bishop Moore's, has bought, like, same thing with all our athletic sports. We, we bought the Gator mask with the uh, logo and stuff on it, and then we bought the actual, like, just a loop-around mask also. And, you know, the kids kind of like that because it gives them something, you know, that the wear, you know, when they're on the bench, of course, you know, when they get in the game, they can take it off, and then it's back to normal once you get on the floor and everything. But I I try to make it, you know, a little bit lighter in practices from the standpoint that I don't want the kids to get overwhelmed or anxiety to take place within the course of what we're trying to accomplish. So we we do a lot of team building games in the beginning, and then we get right into the basketball aspect of things. And then, of course, at the end of practice, we do the final checkouts as far as, you know, if anyone has a temperature and stuff like that, so we can make sure we're sending them home, you know, with a, on a positive note. So that way they can come back to us the next day or go into school or do their virtual classes that they had. Talking this morning with former Caldwell County Tiger Fonzo White, who is, like I said, the boys basketball coach at Bishop Lures there in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And Fonzo, how close do you keep up with the Tiger still? Oh, I, I, I try to stay on your page a little bit and track and see where they're at, you know, especially at my niece place for the Lady Tigers, uh, Paris Gray. And so I, I just try to keep track through her and through my sister as to everything that's going on with Kawa County. And, of course, you know, like I said, we got the Internet, so there's a lot we can watch with that as well. I think they're going to have a pretty good team in the second region, correct? Yeah, they're supposed to be uh, ranked pretty high this year. So uh, everybody was excited, you know, and then the season, at least practice, kind of got cut short. So everybody's just kind of anxious now to get back in practice and, and get the games going in January. Uh, that's, that's a long time to play. Yeah. <laughs> but, of course, they are they, are they doing like a condensed season there, or what? what is it that they're planning on doing? Yeah, actually, uh, it's a little weird. The season was actually moved up a week or so because Rupp Arena wasn't available on the usual dates for the state tournament. So this was going to be an early basketball season in Kentucky. Well, then the coronavirus numbers got away from everybody, and the, the season got pushed back. So, so now you're looking at uh, a January 4th start date, uh, play regular season games in January and February, and then the uh, postseason tournaments will start in March. So, uh, But Kentucky's a little bit longer season than you guys have there in Indiana anyway, right? To, to, well, it's just a different format on how we do things. Like our season usually lasts about 20 weeks, which is you know roughly four to five months. Uh, our girls finish up in February is when their sectional start, start up for state tournament, and then ours start up in March. 
So it'd go the whole month of March. So the first week of March, you have uh, sectionals. Then the next second week, you have your regionals. And then the third week is semi-state. And then uh, the fourth week is the state turn the state tournament for the two finalists for each level. Yeah, and you guys have and we, classes. We have four levels. Yeah, so yes, four class levels. One A is your small school. Two A smaller school. Three A smaller school, which is the level that my school plays in. And then four A is your bigger schools. Uh, talk a little bit about Bishop Lures. Uh, just how many students do you guys have there, and uh, uh, what's the athletic program like? We have a little less than 600 students in, in the whole school, grades 9 through 12. And it, it's a, what they call a parochial private school. And we, we're one of two Catholic schools that are in the Fort Wayne area. We have 13 diocese schools, which is our feeder schools that feed into either our Bishop Lures or Bishop Dwanger. And the kids come, you know, throughout the whole Fort Wayne area because they're spread out throughout the diocese throughout Fort Wayne. So uh, with the pro- athletic program, uh, football course is playing for their 12th state championship tomorrow. Uh, they pretty much dominate the when it comes back to getting back in a 2A class throughout the season. What people don't understand is that at Bishop Lewis, we always play the higher level because people give us so much static about, oh, well, they can get kids from all over and they can get these kids, but they don't realize that we're, like, we're, we're always playing a level up of competition so that way we can be better, win or lose, we're better in the postseason than we were in the regular season. Like with our football team, again, they're in the Class 2A uh, finals for for football, but they play a 6A schedule, which is schools that are like 4,000 to 5,000 students. Some of the schools in the Fort Wayne area are 2,400 students, but they're still considered 6A because they're over that 2,400 threshold of students. And with that, Bishop Lures went into this sectional play to the state tournament play at a, with a record of three and six with those six losses to six A schools. Oh, wow. And so when they got in two A, they started, if you go back, if you look at on, you can look it up online, but if you go back and look at it, they pretty much dominated up until last weekend where they were down 22 to zero and then 28 to seven at halftime and came back at, after halftime and played one of the best second halves of football that I've ever seen. Uh, from a team to come back and win 42-35 over the number one team in Pioneer. Yeah, you talk and about uh, so playing have, up a little bit. Uh, Fort Wayne basketball is pretty good on the high school mm-hmm. level, right? Yes, we're, we're, we play in a SAC conference, which is some ac- athletic conference, which is the third best conference in the state of Indiana behind the MIC, which is the Metropolitan in- Interscholastic Conference in Indianapolis, and then the HHC, which is the northern part of Indianapolis, in Hamilton County area that has like 10 tough schools in it. And we have 10 tough schools in the Fort Wayne area with us being the smallest school of 10 schools in the Fort Wayne area that play in that conference. You know, it's just tough day in and day out where you got to prepare kids mentally and make sure they're physically tough to uh, meet the demands of that conference and just being able to compete with the Homesteads and the Carrolls and the Snyders and all those teams that are playing that area. Yeah, that's got to be a big challenge to play with those bigger schools, but but at the same time, kind of fun to play at that high level, isn't it? Yes, yes, and and you know, I, I, I'm not one to to always you know to play that weak role, but you know, I I, I embrace the challenge of just being able to play against those schools, and then when you beat them, you know, it's more rewarding to yourself and to the program and to the kids for you know knowing that they've accomplished something. You know, especially with us winning the sack last year, it was one of the biggest things that. You know, a lot of kids crying in the locker room because a lot of weight was off their shoulders because no one's looking at them like, hey, you know, lures are the losers, you know, in the area, blah, 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 stuff like that. You know, now it's like, oh, they have some tough kids over there. We got a kid by the name of Nayland Thompson who has two Division One offers. And, you know, it's just one of those things where you got an athlete like that that can play and then his younger brother is just as good as him on the team. It makes you – excited about the season and it's kind of got a lot of excitement around Bishop Lewis High School right now and the Fort Wayne area because a lot of people want to see what we're going to be capable of doing and you know what's the next step for us do we break through the sectional and get all the way to Banker's Life to the state championship just like the football team did yeah sounds like you guys got it going on there at Bishop Lewis well we can we can hope we do I'm, I've been trying my best to do a lot with the feeder systems uh, with working with the 13 dioceses and just trying to get the younger kids more excited about wanting to be a knight and wanting to be a part of our program. 
And, you know, we have a lot of dual sport athletes. So that's the big thing is just trying to keep the dual sport athletes happy and making sure they don't specialize on myself or Coach Lindsey with the football and tell us, hey, one day they're just going to be all football or one day they're going to be all basketball. And, you know, I think it's the biggest thing that Coach Lindsey and I do is we do a great job of communicating with each other and supporting each other throughout the season and making sure our athletes are happy with both of us so that way we can keep our our athletes all together in both sports and maintain a tradition of winning. Well, best of luck to your football guys in the state championship game, and uh, we'll be keeping up with your results this season in basketball and I look forward to a big season there. Well, we appreciate you, Todd, and thank you guys for all your support. And, again, thank you guys for having me on. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Happy, th- happy Thanksgiving to you guys and all the people of Princeton and Caldwell County. All right, thanks, Fonzo. Hey, thank you, guys. See that you. is Fonzo White. He is a former Caldwell County Tiger, and, Ty, always good to see those former Tigers doing well. Doing, doing well, and, man, it sounds like he is uh, – Excited about his upcoming season and going to have a great, great season ahead. So best of luck to those guys. Need to get to another break here on the Sideline Report. Back with more after this, including another top five here on 1580-103.3 WPKY. This is Big John's. Big John's Barbecue. Just like thank everyone for voting for us for the best food truck again this year. We look forward to serving fantastic food every day. Thank you, and y'all have a good day. Your WPKY Weather Edge Weather Center forecast. Partly sunny skies expected through the day today. Going to be a great Thanksgiving day, a high of 58 degrees. Tonight, partly cloudy skies and overnight low down to 38. Partly sunny skies through the day tomorrow, reaching a high of 61 and sunny 54 for Saturday. Again today for Thanksgiving Day, partly sunny skies, a high of 58. Trice Hughes wants your vehicle to last as long as possible. It's getting cooler, and that brings on the yellow light on your dash. Tire pressure. When the temperature drops, so does your tire pressure. This can cause the warning. Stop by Trice Hughes, and they'll check your tires and get rid of that stubborn light. Trice Hughes is here for you. And any questions you may have about your vehicle, buy your next vehicle from the home team. Find them on Highway 91 North, Princeton, or at TriceHughes.com. Shop local, buy local, say big deal. It's here. The Loyal Listener Big Deal Store is online and waiting for you to shop and buy gift certificates to local businesses. Go to WPKYonline.com. Click on Loyal Listener Big Deals. Here you'll find dozens and dozens of gift certificates. Some you'll even be able to redeem from your smartphone. Shop and buy 24 hours a day and save a ton of money in the process. Save on oil changes, dining out, haircuts, car washes, and more. Our store never closes. But you better hurry. You know never know how long each deal will last. This is the Sideline Report on 1580-103.3 WPKY. Show flying along today. Ty Engelbright with us on the show, former co-host, and glad to have him back. And uh, Tonight we're on the loose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got our bump back music going. <laughs> I'm you know. telling you. I uh, appreciate Fonzo White coming on the show and talking to us for a little bit. Uh getting ready for a big basketball season up there in Indiana. And uh, I remember Fonzo as the manager of the basketball team back when I was doing uh, ball games on the radio years and years, years ago. Years ago. So, yeah. uh, and, and then he actually played as a senior. He was a member of the Tiger basketball team, I believe, playing for Coach Robin Scott. So yeah. uh, now Fonzo's a big basketball coach in Indiana. And thriving and doing well. So, so glad for him. Yeah, we'll be keeping up with him and uh, – and seeing how the season goes there for the Bishop Lures Knights. That's exactly right. And, of course, uh, hopefully here pretty soon, the Caldwell County Tiger basketball teams will be cranking up. You know, we've got a little bit of a delay now, but uh, looking forward to that season as well. Yeah, what do we do during December? You know, there's no high school sports going on. Well, right. the, the high school football playoffs are still going on, but uh, Caldwell knocked out of that. But uh, there are some games in the area Friday uh, Murray goes to Mayfield. Hopkinsville goes to Logan County. Uh, Crittenden County hosts Russellville. Right. So there is some football still going on. And, uh, you know, you just hope everybody can stay away from uh, the coronavirus and not have any positive tests and, and get their football seasons completed. Yeah. And, uh, boy, oh, boy, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. But uh, everybody be safe and, and, and let's play ball. As promised, we do have another top five. This one is not sports. So, uh, you know, we're geeks, Todd. Yeah. <laughs> People will just have to bear with us. Uh, this is our top five science fiction movies ever. Our yes. own personal top five. So, 
yeah, and 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 this was a, t- a hard one because, like I said, we're, we're we're geeky. We love science fiction, and you know, there's there's certain categories. That there were there were, there were a couple movies I, I didn't know that were borderline, and I'm talking about the movies that maybe involved some of our superheroes. Yes, that you know, and I decided not to put the superhero movies in there. The problem, the problem with the sci-fi movies is though that I could have a top twenty, oh, and I would easy. still be leaving stuff out. Yeah, me, me too. So I kind of went to the for me some of the classics for me uh, from you know the uh, late seventies and into the early eighties. So I'll start with my number five, okay. which is Star Trek: Wrath of Khan. Yes. So, That's a very good one. Yeah, and 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 it probably deserves to be a little higher, but it's up there. It's it's a go to every time it's on. I got to watch it. Ricardo Montalban. What do you say? Yeah, you know he was awesome. Uh, I think it's the best Star Trek movie. Yeah, you know, and the Star Trek movies have been really hit and miss, kind of yeah. like Star Wars. You know, yeah, exactly. You have some that are great and some that that just don't get there for whatever reason. But yeah, I really like that one. Yep. <laughs> okay, my number five is maybe a bit of a surprise to people that know me, but. I'm going to go with 12 Monkeys. Ah, I, I know you were a fan of that, that, I, that I movie. I love that show. I, if, if not for Die Hard, it would be Bruce Willis's best movie, but yeah. Die Hard is and Die you know, Hard. Die Hard is Die and, and, you know, a lot of people this time of year watch Die Hard because it's some quasi-considered a Christmas movie. Yeah, that's exactly right. That, now that, 12 Monkeys is interesting. I, and, and Brad Pitt. That's what I was thinking, yeah. The crazier the character he plays the better he is in every movie. That that, that might be true. So, that, interesting pick. I'm yeah. kind of proud of you for 12 that 12 Monkeys. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, mine, mine is just so basic. And I'm going with number four, Battlestar Galactica the movie. Oh, wow. You remember that one? I don't know if I remember that one or not. I have to, uh, yeah. I have to go back and look that one and up. Of course, they had a series and most yeah. of the same people, but they actually did a movie. I think it was somewhere around 78, maybe so, 79. Uh, was that before the Galactica 1980 show yeah oh yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah it came out i think 78 or 79 i didn't i didn't look at it but it was still the, pretty much the same cast you had starbuck and you know lauren green was the and, yeah. and you know colonel ty and all that stuff but uh pretty cool wasn't yeah. quite star wars but <laughs> it, it made my list okay so i'm at number four and you'll like this one the empire strikes back classic best star wars movie most consider it the best star wars movie because of just uh the storyline the script and of course the information that you got within the movie and the drama that it that it entailed although i might argue rogue one and i really wanted it on my list but again I, I there's only too. room for five uh, yeah i did too and I, and I would i would argue that now this one you're going to be surprised about but it just sort of came about uh, during the video era so i love the video game of this movie and I also just thought the concept of the movie was cool. It's Tron. Yeah. Uh, and I just think it deserves to be there just because of what it meant for the time. Well, and visually, it was like it, breaking. It was stunning. Yeah. It, it was. It was, it was uh, outstanding. Uh, Jeff Bridges was cool. And then they, they did a Tron Legacy, I think, later on. I don't know what year it was. But Not that long ago, really. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, I'm, I'm talking about the original okay. Tron. Up to number three for me, and uh, this will be an interesting one. I hope you've heard of this one, Ty. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai oh, yes. Across the Eighth Dimension. <laughs> yeah, I saw, yeah, uh, I thought that that could make your list, believe it or not. I saw it. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen the movie. I've seen maybe pieces you of it. You have to watch it. Yeah. I, I, it and I, it's one of those movies you either love it or you absolutely <laughs> don't get it at all. I think I quote that movie on a daily basis, and good. I'm not sure anybody's ever gotten it. Well, I about put space balls on my list, but oh, I didn't. Yeah. I it off. But, but Again, like I said, you can yeah. have 20 on here, so excellent. Bu- Buckaroo Bonsai. My number two is going to be Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's a good one. Um, just because of, again, it's one of those that um, was was just really break a breakthrough type science fiction movie. So we are at number two for me, yep. and uh, mine is going to be Planet of the Apes, the original Planet of the Apes with Charlton Heston. Yeah, um, boy, and h- how how can you not put that one on your list? Really, yeah, I mean, not, I not can, just sci-fi, but I think it's one of the greatest movies. Yeah, I mean, anywhere. I remember just being so struck, and if I don't want to spoil it for anybody, <laughs> but it's been around for a long time. So. Yeah, I don't think you can be accused of giving out spoilers at this point. But when they're walking down the beach at the end, and you just sort of see the spikes of Lady, Lady Liberty in the sand, it's chilling, man. Oh, yeah. You, it, you, you pretty much have the same reaction that, you that, know. That, that, that Charlton Heston had. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but 
I can't. I, it did not make my list. It needed to be on there because it's 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 classic. And I'll go to my number one now. And I think you probably know what it is, just because for just our generation, it was it. And I'm talking about Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. It just sort of was the everything, end all, be all. You know, we could put 2001: A Space Odyssey on there. Oh, yeah. You could put. This was just it for for most of most of our generation because it just sort of and, and look at what it's done in our pop culture. I mean, it just nothing touches it in my mind. I still bristle a little bit though when they say Episode Four and Episode Five. You know, yeah. the first movie was Star Wars. That's right. The second movie was Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, and that's the way it was when they came out. Yeah, there was no, no. two, three, four, five, six. <gasps> Although I guess Lucas had that plan, yeah. Uh, George Lucas had that plan and probably had him episode, uh, you know, you know, but but it wasn't it wasn't released that way. Okay, we're up to my number one, and uh, we've already talked about this a little bit. It's Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan, the movie that made all the geeks cry. You yeah, know? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> made all the geeks cry but yeah uh, uh well, well again you can't give spoilers on a you know whatever it is 40 year old movie now but it's uh, hard when, to believe. when spock dies i mean you know a lot of us lost it oh you my know, goodness first time you see it so. yeah yeah but th- there is th- th- for those of you that have not gone back there is hope for mr spock yeah uh check uh, out star trek three yeah, yeah yeah because yeah so no, but I'm, I'm telling you, it, it is the best uh, Star Trek movie, I, I think, by far. And there's a lot of good ones. There's there's some lemons out there. Uh, First Contact is pretty good if it, you watch that it, one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not bad. Uh, but I, I think it's a pretty good list. And if you have not watched any of these, I need, I need to go back and do Buckaroo Bonsai. Yes, I encourage everyone to watch Buckaroo Bonsai just so you'll get my references. If no, for no other reason, at least you understand what I'm talking about. I'm telling you. Now, what? We, we, we're about out of time, I know, <laughs> but, but it is Thanksgiving, so we got to talk about food. Oh, yeah. Real quick. So what is, what is that special dish that you're looking forward to today? Turkey and dressing. That's, yeah. that's it? That's, there we go, yeah. Mine is oyster dressing. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's mine. But I, I do like the turkey and the fact that I'll get to keep eating it, you know, for several days later. And do you put the cranberry sauce on the sandwich? No, I don't. I don't go that route. Okay. Do you? Of, yeah, um, I, I, I tried it a couple years ago, and I'm kind of sticking with it. I'm pretty plain, you know. I like <laughs> the turkey and the dressing and the mashed potatoes and corn and green beans and those kind of things. I, I, I like that. I, in fact, uh, as soon as I get off the air here, I'm going to. <laughs> I, I've got to. I've got to run home and prep real quick because I've got lots of stuff to do. But uh, I, I enjoy being in the kitchen. So yeah, I appreciate you coming in on the show today. Do want to throw out a few things. Uh, congratulations to Will Barnes and to Russ Bashir for being named the <laughs> Class 2A First District Coach and Player of the Year. Congratulations. Uh, continues a pretty lengthy Caldwell string there. David Barnes won the Coach of the Year award like nine times. Nice. Yes. So uh, Will Barnes has one now, and uh, he can keep working on that and uh, try to catch his dad. That's fantastic. And congratulations to those guys. Great season for the Tigers, you know, with the adversity. You know, you got to go through Murray or Mayfield when you're in Class 2A down, you know. So, uh, you know, that was a tough one uh, last Friday. But uh, guess what? We just start thinking about next season. Well, and the main thing this year there were so many different things and the stops and starts and you mm-hmm. never really knew if you were going to play that week until the game got here and yep. you know sometimes on Tuesday or Wednesday the game would get canceled or uh, one week you prepare for one team and end up playing somebody and else and you're so. trying to, to to fill your schedule up so yeah, yeah. so 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 this season I, I've kind of decided just to give everybody kind of a pass this year I, I haven't complained about my professional teams as much as I usually do <laughs> but I'm just you know everything's so messed up yep that I'm just kind of giving everybody a pass, and uh, next year I'll go back to complaining about my professional teams. Well, hey, we're, th- we're thankful for lots of things, especially on this day, and we're thankful for sports because uh, sports is one of those things when, when times get tough and things get rough, you can sort of uh, fall into uh, a sports moment and sort of forget about the way things may be well like happy gilmore it's our happy place it's our happy place that's yeah you go to sports for happy place and uh when sports isn't there you have to find something else to do i guess but no doubt about it well thank you for having me today and happy thanksgiving to you todd and to everybody out there yeah happy thanksgiving and uh, thanks for coming in appreciate it all right hope we do it again soon yeah that's ty inglebright uh thanks to fonzo white for joining us on the phone this morning former Caldwell county tiger who's now the uh, boys basketball head coach up at bishop lures in uh, fort wayne indiana 
That's going to wrap us up on the Sideline Report for today. Thanks a lot for listening. You've been listening to the Sideline Report here on 1580-103.3-WPKY. You're listening to the voice of Caldwell County, 1580-103.3-WPKY Princeton, an Edge Media Group station.